So now that we've discussed Hamiltonian graphs, there are several ways to extend this idea in an area of graph theory called highly Hamiltonian graphs. So uh, this section, section 6.4 of our text, breaks it down into these three um, different introductions into this topic of highly Hamiltonian graphs, Hamiltonian connected graphs, Hamiltonian extension numbers, and then hand-connected and hand shifted so these certainly aren't all the possible ways to extend Hamiltonicity, uh, but we'll take a look at these as sort of an introduction to the subject. So uh, the first of which Hamiltonian connected graphs we'll talk about in this video. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about this. Uh, we're not going to talk about Hamiltonian extension numbers. Feel free, if you like, to read uh, this part of the section. I'm not going to do videos on it or talk about it in the class or assign homework problems. Again, I need to pick and choose what topics we look at as we move forward. Uh, so uh, we will, however, look at pan-connected and pan-cyclic graphs. And one of the reasons why I chose to ex uh, exclude Hamiltonian extension numbers and just focus on these two um, is because in each of these we'll see uh, aura-type results and Dirac-type results. So remember for Hamiltonian graphs, um, aura's theorem was, had to deal with sigma 2, right? If sigma 2 of G was at least um, N, then G was Hamiltonian. And Dirac, Dirac's result, Dirac's uh, theorem, this we expressed as a corollary of or, but this was a minimum degree result, right? If minimum degree was at least N over 2, that implied that G uh, had a uh, was all was Hamilton. So each of these extensions of Hamiltonian graphs are going to contain results of these types. All right. So without further ado, let's get into Hamiltonian connected graphs. So first off, Hamiltonian connected doesn't mean right. Notice the dash here. It doesn't mean both Hamiltonian and connected. Uh, well, because that's silly. Uh, any Hamiltonian graph is automatically connected, and so that would be redundant. So what we mean by Hamiltonian connected is that between any two vertices of the graph, any pair UV, there is a Hamiltonian UV path. So uh, we, we've talked, we've seen a result before about just the existence of there being a Hamiltonian path. Remember I called these graphs traceable. Um, this is stronger than that. This is between any two vertices in the graph, you can find a Hamiltonian path, path that contains other results of the graph. So, for example, take K3 box K2, Cartesian product of these two graphs. Pick any two vertices. So, let's say, let's take this one and this one, for instance. Uh, the claim is that I can find a Hamiltonian path between them. And sure, I can. Let's see. I'm going to use a highlighter for this. Get a highlighter, highlight the graph. Um, let's see, how can I do this? How about I go around, go around the cycle, and then go there. That would be Hamiltonian path containing those two vertices. Um, let's see, I could do this one and maybe this one. It would be two different vertices. Let's see, can we do that? Well, certainly we can. Let me get over there. And that works. Uh, how about two vertices in the same uh, copy as C3? Could be those two. Yeah, certainly we could do that. And so you can just kind of go through, run through the possibilities here, and give an example for any two pair, uh, any two vertices, any pair of vertices in the graph, you can find a Hamiltonian path uh, between them. And so this graph here is Hamiltonian connected. Q3, on the other hand, cube on eight vertices, is not Hamiltonian. So, so while I can find a Hamiltonian path between, say, these two vertices, there would be a Hamiltonian path between those two vertices. So it is, it is a traceable graph. However, if I pick, say, that vertex and this vertex, um, there is no way to... It looks like I could find a Hamiltonian path between those two. I'm picking the opposite. 
pretty bad. Yeah, it's a fun Hamilton tapestry. Let's see. Let's see. Alright, that was the one part. What about. Ah, uh, yeah, what about those two together? Let's see. So I could go either down here, or I could go, so I could either take a, a right path. I have a couple options there. I can come down here. I need to get this vertex in here. Certainly, I can't do that now because then I wouldn't be able to come down with that vertex. So actually, there's an argument made uh, I could make here that I would have to I have to go down like this as my first step. That's the only way to get this vertex in there. Um, and then I have to go over like this. Um, and now, yeah, there's an argument to be made here that I'd have to increase this vertex. I'd have to go up. And I'd want to come down. And now, no matter what, I can't get to this vertex. So there's no Hamiltonian path between those two, uh, those two vertices. So this one is not. That is, there exists a pair of vertices for which there is no Hamiltonian path between them. All right, so quick result here. That isn't a theorem in the text, but I wanted to just mention it. Uh, if gra if a, a graph of order at least three is Hamiltonian connected, then necessarily it's Hamiltonian. Um, so it's a stronger property than Hamiltonian in most cases. At least when, when order is at least three, a stronger property than Hamiltonian. So how could we prove this? Um, so if a graph is Hamiltonian connected, uh, let's, uh, then certainly there's it's not an empty graph. There's at least one edge in there. So you take a vertex U uh, adjacent to a vertex V like this and find a Hamiltonian path between U and V. This is Hamiltonian connected. That exists. And so now we have the Hamiltonian path between U and V together with the edge UV produces a Hamiltonian cycle. So every graph that's Hamiltonian connected is also Hamiltonian. So that's pretty nice. Um, and then for a, uh, a little bit better of a result, a little bit less trivial result, is that uh, a, a aura type result, of course. This, this is theorem 6.15, so if you have a graph of order N, if this uh, minimum non-adjacent degree sum is at least n plus 1, uh, then you is Hamiltonian connected. So let's go ahead and prove this. <clears throat> and I want to remind you, um, we're going to use the closure operation here. Remember that uh, a graph and its closure, uh, right, a graph is Hamiltonian if and only if its closure is Hamiltonian. So we're going to somehow use uh, that theorem and and that uh, graph is Hamiltonian to deduce that it's Hamiltonian connected. So let's see how this works. All right, so I want to show that between any two vertices, there's a Hamiltonian path. So let U and V uh, be two vertices of G. And I'll show that there is a uh, UV Hamiltonian path. So these are two arbitrary vertices. So if I can do that, we'll be done. Um, and let H be the graph uh, obtained from G by adding a new vertex W and the edges UW and VW. So, okay, so I take my graph with sigma 2 of G at least N plus 1. I have chosen, I've picked out these two vertices U and V that I'm trying to show that there's a Hamiltonian path between them. So this is my graph G. Um, and I'm making a new graph, a uh, new graph which will be order uh, N plus 1 because I'm adding a new vertex to it. 
and I'm going to call it this W. So this should seem familiar uh, to other proofs that we've looked at. And I make it adjacent to those two. Uh, so now this is my new graph H, which is this whole, this whole thing. So my claim here, I claim that uh, the closure of H, I'm going to call it F, is complete. That's my claim is that when we, when we do the closure operation on this, we'll have a complete graph. All right, so let's see why that's true. So if you take any two vertices, let's just say X and Y, and they could be U or V in this graph, take any two vertices, X and Y um, in H, So degree in h of x plus degree h of y, uh, degree in h of y. Uh, well, remember that the degree sums of any two non-adjacent vertices uh, in g um, that these are at least n plus 1, which again is the order of h. So that means any two any two non-adjacent vertices uh, in, in H, where the two vertices come from G, they meet this condition that their degree sum is at least the order of the graph, and so they are adjacent in the closure. Uh, and this was true for any two vertices in G, and so if I look at the induced subgraph in F, the closure of H, uh, induced by the vertex set of G, that this is a complete graph. Because any two vertices in here meet the degree sum condition, so when I construct the closure, uh, they will be adjacent. So this forms a complete graph Kn, and so what I need to argue now is that actually W is adjacent to everything in F as well. So uh, take X in uh, the vertex set of G, it's not U and V, right? I want not to be adjacent to W. I'm trying to show W is adjacent to X. Uh, so this is a good picture for that is X. Then in F, so degree in F of X plus degree in F of W. So F, I know that this vertex set of G forms a Kn inside of F. So the degree of X is N minus 1. And then the degree in F of W, well, it's certainly at least 2, because I started off with degree 2. Um, so that's N plus 1. And that's what we needed, right? We needed the degree. So, so now the degree of X plus the degree of W in um, F is at least N plus 1. So that means they meet the degree sum condition in F. And so since F is the closure of H, uh, they will be adjacent. X and W will be adjacent. So uh, Wx is an edge of F. And that shows it. So that must mean W is adjacent to X. It's adjacent to any vertex in G. So uh, F, which again is the closure of H, is a complete graph of order n plus 1. OK, and then remember this theorem. Uh, theorem 6.7. Um, since the closure of H was complete, uh, which is Hamiltonian, that means H was Hamiltonian. H is Hamiltonian. Um, and remember that in H, so back up a second, this was in F, I was showing that edge. In H, we just have W adjacent to just U and V. Excuse me. Uh, w is just adjacent to U and V. Uh, so, I guess I'll say since since degree in G of W, or sorry, degree in H. Is uh, two. These edge ha these edges have to concert, uh, occur consecutively, as we've seen before. U W and W V occur consecutively 
in any, in any cycle. So removing W from the Hamiltonian cycle produces a Hamiltonian DV path. I and G. And that's the proof. So remember, U and V were arbitrary, um, and so this is true for any two vertices U and V, and so we always have a DV Hamiltonian path. That's how you find that. All right. That's that theorem. And then, so that was the orotype result for Hamiltonian connectedness. And so, of course, we have corollary 6.16 which is the Dirac type result. Um, and that is if G is a graph of order N such that the minimum degree is at least N plus one over two, then G is Hamiltonian connected. And again, this follows trivially from the previous theorem uh, because the sum of any two uh, non-adjacent vertices one. Okay, so that's it for this video. In the next one, we'll take a look at pan-connected and pan-cyclic graphs.